Hi, I'm Sandra Younger, inventor of the cord knotting and design tool called the Knotty Do It All. I want to welcome you to uh, this year's the Cus uh, JTV Customer Appreciation. If we, we are going to be making this beautiful Serenity necklace. And before I go any further, I just want to show you a couple of customers that definitely took this to the next level. So we have a Laura Lee out in Florida, and look at the the color choices and the, just the bead combinations and you know just uh, the bail work in general it just looks absolutely like gorgeous and then uh, the next one that we have is a kumi in oregon and on um, the one on the left she uh, used a, a a jump ring to add the the clasp which you could certainly do and the uh, the one on the right um, you know she definitely took it to the next level by you know adding that little uh, that those uh, six macrame uh, gold beads on the outside and the uh, I'm going to be making exactly almost exactly this necklace the only thing that's going to change is I'm going to use a, a different uh, pendant because I want you to get the uh, overall um, you know idea of this necklace and, and you know when I, I did a, a, a show on this once and you know I did get a lot of questions because it was that um, just getting the, the threads right and, and I'll explain that in a minute and the the interesting thing is you don't need much. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but, but it, it very um, not that m many beads. But for this uh, particular project, the uh, I think the the one thing that all of mine seem to share, the ones that I make, anyways, is that the bead in the middle is always like a six millimeter bead. That's how come I you know I do uh, say that you know down on the you know, right hand side, it's got the, you know, the six millimeter bead, but, um, you know, this is the, the list of, uh, you know, all the different um, things that you'll need. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. And for this uh, project, you're definitely going to need a leadered needle. And if you don't know what a leadered needle is, what it is, is uh, it's very thin thread. And I use, um, this is um, the quilting thread. It's very, very thin. And the reason I'm going to be using this is, you know, I will show you in just one second. Let me get my needle. And I am gonna show you how to get the, you know, how to tie it on the end. So what you do is you um, feed. Let's get that in there. Your cord. Let me see if I can get that perfect. And when you make uh, leadered needles, I, what, I like to make them long so that way I can reuse them because I just love reusing these because there's no point like throwing it away um, when, it, when it can be reused. And the, the cord that I'm, go I'm going to be using is a wax jewelry cord and a 0.5. So, um, let me just get this uh, tied on. So when I tie the, the ends, I do a double over, instead of just doing a single overhand knot, I just I give it a double twist. And then I, you know, I string, uh, I tie the end. So here is that. And I'm gonna put this aside. And let me put it someplace where it doesn't get lost. Okay, I'm gonna put it right there. Okay, the basic anatomy of these, um, necklaces let me let me show you you'll have um three cords because you know this uh section is braided and you need three cords for braiding but however you know here it you know you have two i don't want to say two cords but it looks like two cords because the uh three uh two of them are going through uh, these beads here and then one of them is going through uh, these beads here but the the lesson I'm gonna be uh, showing today this one it, it, it kind of goes to a different level because the uh, the waxed jewelry cord by itself wouldn't uh, go through but I've got a tip that it will help you get um, that cord through and so <clears throat> excuse me and so at a basic level let's say in you know a, like a perfect world you had all your beads and um, two of them went through these 
and one of them went through that. So, that, you know, everything's going good. And then, you know, you bring everything together. Uh, let, let me just uh, do an overhand knot here. Th th this is just to show you, uh, you know, basically what you do. So let's get that overhand knot there. Whoops. And then, you know, you, you put all your beads down and then you, you just pull everything so they kind of get like bunched up. See that? That's how, you know, you, you do this. And, you know, of course, this is just like an example just to like illustrate like how, you know, you um, get that, that look. And to get it just like right, that's the fun part. Really experiment. I mean, because the ones that I've made, it, and it was fun, you know, just like coming up with different uh, design patterns because on these, um, like some of them, the, you know, you can see that the, uh, the distance is like farther and some of them are closer. So you just need to like experiment and find, see they're just, you know, all different. So you just gotta kind of experiment around and, you know, see, you know, what kind of uh, combination that you like. So, so let's go to the tips and tricks. All right, so this is where, you know, in the lesson um, people uh, did get confused. Okay, so you, I'm gonna uh, cut, uh, I'm gonna 40 inches of like one. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna, okay, 40 inches. So here's one, here's cord number one. But, for, let's see, then, oh, one thing you gotta do, okay, so let's say you're like, okay, um, Okay, so like, oh, right, this, okay, this is the the reason why I, I have, I'm using the leader needle. See, because I'm using these teeny weeny beads and see the, the, um, it's kind of like hard to get those uh, beads on because th this will start to like really flare up because if you've been making jewelry, you know that, you know, the end gets all flary and then um, it's a little bit uh, difficult to get, uh, string the beads on. But what I do for, the, the the strand where the uh, beads are going to go on. What I do is I take uh, the wax jewelry cord and I uh, I cut 80 inches, and then I separate the the strand. So I'm going to come in here, and then uh, w one of the nice things about the, uh, the the wax jewelry cord is that it splits really easily. So I'm going to uh, come in. I'm going to untwist this a little bit, and I'm gonna pull this and see how it just like comes apart really easily. And then when, when you do this, don't pull it that way. Don't do this. Cause that that's makes it like, uh, makes it into a really big mess. So what I do is I just like pull it just like, and sometimes it'll like really start to like bunch up and all you have to do is just ease it, like hold it here and then ease the, uh, the bunching down just to, what it does is, is it just uh, like helps loosen up the, uh, the the cord, and you just uh, keep going. You just pull this and just keep going. And then you'll end up with a uh, two like strands that are uh, 80 inches long. But see, when you come back and you hold this, it's technically back to like, like a single strand, except this time, it, you know, you're separating it and then you're folding it back on itself. And, the, and, and when you pull on it, just you want to stretch it just to get the kinks out, just like that. Let's get all these kinks out. I mean, you guys knew you could do this, right? And, and, and with some uh, stringing materials, it doesn't uh, work very well, but with the wax jewelry cord, it works fantastically. So I'm gonna fold this, and this is uh, where I'm gonna attach the uh, the leader needle. So let me, so here's this. Now I'm gonna take that leader needle that I made, 
And I'm going to put this in. See that? So now I'm going to uh, string on the uh, these little tiny uh, turquoise um, cubes. Usually, I mean, if they're on the strand, it's just probably smarter just to like grab like bunches of them. But I just happen to have them loose. Oh, and you know what? Um, you know what? I, I want to give you a cool tip. You know, at any strand of beads, you know, that some of them come in different colors, you know? So uh, I, I use 12. Let me, let me get these separated. So uh, take the better, the best looking ones and then put them in front, you know? So let, let, let's do, let's get them arranged so you have like the real colorful ones um, in front. So I'm gonna, let me do that. Let me zoom out a little bit. Because that, that's a pretty good tip. Now I'm going to separate them out and then I'm going to uh, bring them on here and I will be right back. Okay, now that, I've, that I have the uh, of these guys on, the, the ones that are going to get strung on next are this uh this series of right in here because these have like little itty bitty beads and these beads up here they have um the holes are bigger so the two strands are going to go through uh, those on the top so i'm gonna like string um, this pattern on and then i'm going to string on the rest of the beads Okay, so, so now I've got the, the pattern on, on the, uh, this one, and now I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm going to add these beads, of the, the other set, but what I'm gonna do first is uh, string the, uh, this uh, pattern here onto the uh, other two strands. So, if you come in, let's see, they, they should uh, fit easily because I, I made sure that they would work. So let's do that. Okay, so the pattern is, let's see. And I'm gonna be using a different uh, a six millimeter bead here. I'm gonna use a round one. So. Uh, you, it's a uh, three rondelles. So there's let's kind of like squish it. There's one, two, and three. See then. Another thing you could also do, just uh, it, when you're doing this strand too, you could also do the leader needle uh, thing because you you will end up with the two like strands. All you have to do is just like cut the folded end, so that would work as well. So, but I'm not going to do that because I you know I, I don't want to. I, I know this can be really confusing, so I don't want to like, like confuse. Um, confuse you guys so what, what now now i was just like what color should i use now see that's where it gets fun because you just like hmm let's see that one that would look pretty that one would look good this one oh my goodness see that's where oh i don't know which one <gasps> you know what i'll uh, i'll go with this one or should i do the red i mean any of them will work maybe that one I, hmm I'll, I'll stick with the blue let's yeah do the blue. See, okay, that, oh, I hope it goes through. Yeah, see that? Another thing that you can do, another tip that I have, like, 
is that you could heat harden the end. You know, uh, you, if you just uh, clip the ends and you take a lighter and run the a lighter over, that uh, really helps. I mean, and I think the only reason I'm not doing it now is because, you know, I just, I have so few um, beads to get on here that, you know, sometimes you just gotta, uh, like, decide whether it's worth the time. I think if I, I needed to string, like, 50 beads, I would definitely do the, um, the leader needle thing. So, okay, so we're getting there. Okay. So now what you need to do is you need to center. We're going to center this. Okay, so let's get these centered. Okay, so that one's good. And now we got to make sure that the, uh, we could kind of pull the, push these off to the side. And I did tie a knot on the end so that the beads don't fall off. So let's get this one centered as well. Okay, so, all right, about right there, that's good. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring both of these together, just like that. And right here, you're gonna tie an overhand knot. You want to pull all the, you know, the different uh, thread. So do you, if, do you see what, what's happening here? So here we have our, our quote unquote three because these uh, were separated, but now they're brought back together. And even when you um, like separate them, then you go back and braid them. It's not even noticeable at all. And then uh, this one here. So you just kind of push everything down. And always check to make sure that you got the uh, your pattern right because there have been a couple of times that it it looked right and then when I actually tied it off I realized that I I messed something up. So what, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna uh, tie an overhand knot uh, really close. Oh, it's already looking so cool. Oh, look at that. Okay, so and one thing that might be helpful is a uh, a knotting awl. Look at this. I'm gonna take one of these. Okay, so now you gotta come in here and tie an overhand knot. And just get it really, get both of those out. Let's see, we've got our knotting all in there just to make sure that everything's like nice and close before we actually like crank that down okay so let's tighten all these you could just like pull each one individually okay it's looking good look at that isn't that pretty and, and you know the interesting thing about this necklace it seems like no matter what you pick I, because every single one of them i've made i did like i just like okay i'm just gonna grab something random and no matter what i did even if i thought okay this is just for science i don't expect it to look good it ended up looking really cool i was just like i was like uh, like so surprised so then what you do is you come back uh to the strand that has the leader needle and then you uh, uh string on the other uh 12 cubes so i'm gonna do that and i'll be right back Okay, and after you uh, strung on uh, the rest of your beads, just uh, you can cut your leader needle off and just tie a knot so the, uh, the beads uh, don't fall off. So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to braid. And I, I'm going to go really slow because I know a, a lot of people say, oh, I don't know how to braid. And it's really, for some people, it's really difficult. But I'm just going to go so slow and I'm going to try to explain everything as I do this. Okay, so once you get to this point, so let's scoot all our beads down just so it looks pretty. So there we have that. And now we have this one. Okay. So when you braid the, you want the, uh, the, see how the, the beads, these guys are facing down? You don't want them to face up. So that is uh, one thing I'm gonna show you how to prevent, or just how to how to do it. Let me, and I know that um, you, you might need to excuse me because sometimes I have to kind of like, 
It's one of those things where, you know, even though I've been doing this uh, forever, I got, I need to kind of refresh my memory. Okay, so here's what you want to do. You want to like get these cords and kind of just like arrange them so, okay, so the, you have the front facing this way and just put it down and then the strand with the beads, have it on your right hand side because, uh, and then you, you count like hold this and just uh, count, um, let me see, like in, and then in, and then in, and I'll do that again. And you're only gonna do that just for the beginning part because if, if you start braiding, um, it leaves too much of a gap. See, when, when you start like with the beads on the right, like I'm showing, it, it produces a braid right here, but the, the shortest braid before you start adding the beads. Otherwise you have a big uh, like gap right there. And so, okay, let's do this again. So in, in, in. Okay, now what you want to do is slide a bead up. And see, I use the pads of my fingers a lot and I've got a lot of tension. I'm like, I'm kind of like, like holding it and kind of just gently tugging it towards me. So you hold your bead and then um, you just like, you gently hold it and you count one. So, so every time you count now, from now on, when you go, you go one, two, three, four, five, six. The, the strand with the beads is on this side again. And so when you uh, look at your, uh, you see your necklace, you see that the that bead is uh, facing down. Um, however, um, see at, at this point you could, if you want uh, like less spacing between your beads, like I did on this one, like every, like six braid, you push a bead up and then, you know, you braid six. But for this one, I wanted uh, more space in between because the, the beads are just so brilliant and bright and pretty that I just thought it would look uh, like better with uh, more spacing in between. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count uh, like 12 in between. So I'm gonna count another six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you pull this guy out because this uh, thread on the left, once you pull it out, all these uh, cords on the bottom, uh, they, they're, they're not tangled anymore. Because if you keep braiding without pulling this one out, it's gonna turn into a huge tangled mess. And then you uh, slide a bead down, and then you just, uh, see how I, I hold it, and then when I, I come in here, and then I just hold it real fast, so it, it just, so it keeps it in there. So there's one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then I pulled this one out. And then I just uh, light another one up, hold it, one. And I use the pads of my fingers a lot. So Two, see that, then I grab it. Two, three, four, whoops. Okay, so that one went. It's easy to get like back on track. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then you pull. And So ideally you want your braid to be really nice and snug. So I wish I, I, my fingers were transparent so you could see, maybe I can like try to do this so that you could see. So with my finger, I guess what I do is I kind of like make it a little bit snug in here, but like inside my finger. So that way you can not, you can kind of see that I make it really like nice and tight. And if you lose count, um, it, since you have your double thread, once it's on this side again, you've either done six, 12 or 18. So you can just uh, like keep going without 
you know, having to like always be paying attention because once it's back on that side, you know that, you know, you've um, done your, uh, you know, your six, 12 or 18. So you just uh, keep going until you uh, finish braiding all of the beads. And for this one, um, what, what I've done is I braided all the way down. So after you finish your last bead, just keep going until uh, this apart is uh, at least 13 inches because um, for a necklace that that's adjustable, the, the a, a good target length uh, is 13 inches on each side. So it, it, when you open it, it's uh, 26 inches. So, so I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna finish this side and then I'm gonna show you what you need to do because there's a one little step you need to do uh, to get the other side just right. So let me uh, finish this and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we have this side. This side's done and it looks perfect. Look at that, perfect. So when you do the next side, okay, you gotta like turn the your pendant over. Because if you, um, if you don't, then the, the beads will be on like different sides. So what you do is you, you know, turn this up um, to where you hold it like this and then uh, clip this part in. And then what you do is you uh, you do the same thing. You take uh, those of uh, the beads and you kind of, let's get these, whoops. Just kind of like pull everything, just kind of like separate them out to where the the strand with the beads are on um, this side and then you count in of like four, you go one, two, three. Actually you count in three and then you slide a bead up and then you just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that should like have see how the beads now are like facing like downward and so what you do is you just uh you keep braiding like these uh 12 beads just like i showed and in, in case you missed it here i'll do i'll do a couple So I'm holding, slide the beat up, and then count one, two, three, four, five, six. Did that thing get derailed? No, that's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then out. Then you slide a beat up. And I guess, you know, I'm, I'm just holding them with you know, all three of my fingers and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and then you pull out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, finish a braiding of that side and then uh, we'll get to the ending part because I think I might change things up a bit. I'm thinking of putting some little fluffers on the end. so. Um, I will be right back as soon as I finish that other side. Okay, I have finished braiding. And you know, one thing I didn't show you is just like the, the quick way to like tie the end off after you've uh, finished braiding. So let me uh, put this in here. What I do is I take a, one of the, uh, the the cords and I just uh, do an overhand knot just like that and just kind of, and this is just like a, a temporary hold. Because, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, put the, the little fluffers on the end. I'm going to kind of take this one to the next level because you could just uh, put like string beads on the end, but I want to like put like little fluffy things. So let's make those. So let me uh, just put this aside. And what you need for the little fluffy things are uh, two um, like closed rings and uh, some faux leather. And I want to take about, you don't need much to make these guys. Let's see. But they're really cute. They add a, a nice little touch. 
So what you do is you put a pin and a clip an inch apart, and then you uh, string your faux leather through, and you uh, make a moose knot. So if you're familiar with the moose knot, and you don't, I mean, right now the, the measurement isn't like that important because we're gonna be cutting off most of it anyway. So let me get a egg. Let's see if I got this right. Actually, let me make this a little bit longer because you need a little bit of like leverage to make that knot. So I'm just gonna push this one a little bit closer. You just wrap, I'm gonna wrap uh, twice. So that way the it's not so big right in here. So you take the peg out and then you feed this cord through. And let's tighten that. And then you slide this up. And then um, I'll, I'll show you like, you know, you can put like a little a drop of uh, GS Hypo cement to keep it from like coming apart. So maybe this next one I can do it a little bit better. Let's get that an inch apart and feed this through. And these little fluffers add a really nice um, like element. And I and on my website, I, I do have a whole like uh, like video on how to make these. And I you know I don't I don't know if I've got like variations. I, I think I might I do. So you might want to check that out. So you just tighten this. nice and snug and then slide it up and then right about I don't know, it just depends on how big you want your like little fluffers to be uh, I'm gonna come in and cut about ooh, about right there then I'm gonna trim this one and then one thing um, sometimes it's you can like unfluff them with your hand but sometimes it's a little bit um, like tricky. So what I do is I take a, a knotting awl and I just come in and just like like kind of wiggle it in there and just kind of separate the the threads out. It's kind of like what it does is it just makes them look like a little uh, tassel. See that? Isn't that cute? So sometimes if you, you just like feed the feed it in and then come in sideways. So you put it like in the middle like that and then kind of, I don't know, you just got to do whatever works. <laughs> Let's get these little fluffers like really fluffed out. Okay. Hey, that looks good. And when you uh, come back and uh, put these on. I made the, these a little bit longer than the uh, the 13 inches because I knew that I was going to come in and put these uh, fluffy things in there. So I'm going to uh, trim these excess off only because they kind of bug me. Let's get everything lined up and then feed this one on. And uh, what you want to do is I miss a thread. Okay. Just measure uh, and fold this at 13 inches. So I'm gonna come over here because I've got a, a ruler. And then right, okay, so right there. Because remember, you need uh, to get that 26 so that it fits over your head after you uh, put the macrame slide knot on. It's really important. So like right there, I'm gonna fold it. And then what I'm going to put in here is a macrame binding knot. So if you are not familiar with the macrame binding knot, I just love them. So I'm going to flip that right here and turn this and then get another clip and clip. Oh, sorry. Clip that part right in there. And then I, I take a and th this part you can get actually creative because you could actually uh, make the binding knot, let's say, with a different color. Let's say if you want to do like red or, or green or something that matches. But I'm, I think I might um, like stick with the, uh, the black. 
So I'm gonna take probably like 14 to 16 inches. And then I'm gonna come right in here. And I'm gonna macrame. So when I do this, I, I do my first uh, knot, kind of like just a, an, like an overhand knot. And then I go right in here. So there's top, bottom, top, bottom, You just uh, keep going until it's, uh, I don't know, N not too short because then it kind of looks weird. But another thing that you could do if you really want to even take it to the next, 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 next level is you could actually put uh, beads here and then uh, macrame them like um, with beads on the outside. I think I have, uh, let me see this next. Oh yeah, like this one, see that? Uh, so you could uh, put like something like that um, if you want to get really creative. Just keep uh, going until it gets to where it looks like visually pleasing. Yeah, I mean, you'll just know. I think like right there, I think that looks good. I mean, and even though I, I didn't count uh, when I come back and do the other side, I'm, I'm definitely going to make sure that they're about the same um, like length. And if you guys don't have uh, like one of these thread zappers, they are fantastic. And if you are going to use them, uh, I definitely highly recommend lithium batteries because they, I kid you not. I mean, I love the rechargeables and I, I do use rechargeables, but the, uh, the lithium, they just last forever. Ooh, look at that, they're looking good. Now we need to do this side. And I'll just do this side real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're almost finished. Oh, so okay, so what you should have is something that looks like this. It's got, you've got your fluffers on the end. And oh, look how pretty it's looking. So what I'm gonna do is, okay, there are a couple of ways you, you could do your macrame slide knot. You could do it plain if you want. Let's see some of the, the things I have here. Okay, I got mostly plain. I know I do have one where I, uh, yes, this one. I think on this one, I'm going to, instead of doing it plain, I'm going to uh, add beads on the outside like this. Okay, so what you do is you take uh, about 16 to 18 inches of, of your wax jewelry cord and you separate them out so the one a four on one side and then four on the other and i tied knots on the end so that the beads uh, don't fall off so now what we do is crisscross these ends over each other and then clip them just like that and then you take your cord and then when you uh, do the, let me get the, make sure this stays focused. Okay, right there. So when you start, what I like to do, especially when I'm adding beads, is I'll I'll make I'll do a four macrame. So here's a one. So that's top, bottom, top. And then the bottom. So there's a uh, four, and then I'll add the beads. And the reason I do that is because when you're adding uh, beads, it it has less like folding power than if you uh, do it a plain like this. Does, does that make sense? Because see how it's got the the cord. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. You can see the, the cord that should be touching the this part, it's actually inside the bead. So there's no contact there. So that means that, that there's no like quote unquote holding power. So when you uh, start it, 
Um, I like to do a, a few extras just so it's got that um, extra, like, I, for lack of a better word, holding power. So, and then I uh, put the bead down. And then I um, I do a top. I always I slide the bead down when I do the top. So there's a top. And then I do a bottom. And then I slide a bead down. Another one down. This is, and you can make these uh, macrame uh, slide knots. As, you can make them longer if you want. You know, whatever, like creative process you want to bring to it. And, okay, and the, the reason I, I like uh, doing the, the knot, I mean the, um, I slide the beads down at the top because it's hard to like push them up from the bottom. So it just makes it so much easier. So there's a top, bottom. I do the last one and then four macrame. So there's, I do a top, bottom, top, bottom. So there's top, Bottom, top, and bottom. This is looking so cute. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see it. Ugh. And another uh, tip, you know, like sometimes if, you know, if you're working with black cord and it gets a little bit distracting because you really can't uh, see what uh, you're doing, you could always put like uh, something white on the bottom. So that way you can um, really like get in there and get it just right. Because sometimes that happens to me. It, 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 it could vary because of lighting conditions, or you know, um, or I think what it gets uh, worse when the cord is really, really, really thin. That's when it really gets me because I don't want to like mess it up and put get it to where it burns through my actual project okay so Ooh, let's make way I can't wait to see this let me I always have to every time I make something I just clean up my entire workspace just so I could admire it okay let's see what we have here oh look at that oh my god look how cute that is let me zoom in so you can see it it's got the little fluffers it's adjustable Look at that. Oh my goodness. And I tell you guys, you cannot go wrong um, with uh, this, just this overall style because it's just, it's so cute. And th let me, um, let me see if I could do like a, a recap. So the three chords, right? And one of them, the, especially the one that's going to have like, it, it becomes a more important, especially if you're using really, really tiny beads. So you're going to want to, uh, like select that one is the one that you split in half, fold, and then put the leader needle on because uh, getting the, the thread through otherwise is going to be impossible. So, um, and you, I, I used a side facing uh, bead here and th this one has a like a ring on the bottom and one thing that you could do is that you can uh, add a wire wrap bead on there. But if you don't want to, one thing that I have done is you could actually cut this off with a pair of uh, 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 like cutters and get a file and uh, smooth it down and it, it, it you won't even notice that it had a ring before. So anyway, so that is, um, that is our project. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. God, it's one of my favorite, it, it honestly, I think it's one of my favorites to make because when I finish it, I just never know like what I'm gonna get. It's like a big surprise. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, like tutorial and um, I'll see you guys, bye.